Hi, good evening, everybody, and Happy New Year. Um, we're back with a 45 minute Pilates class. You will need, as you can see over the top of my shoulder, you need a chair, you need a block and a towel, and you need your stretch band, and of course, a safe space to work in. And then let's start straight away. Make sure if you've got any injuries that you, rather than listening to me, think about what the physio said, think about what your health professional said, and listen to that advice and do what you can. Cut anything out that you're unhappy with. Anything that hurts is a sign that your body is not happy to do. So please take it easy. Place your feet with the part. You can fit a fist between the front and the back of your foot. And then you're gonna start with your shoulder rolls backwards. Finding a nice deep breath as you do so. Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose and out through the mouth. <clears throat> All right, just take a deep breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna bring it down into a forward flexion. Goodness, and if you've got osteoporosis, make sure that you're only doing about a third of this movement and then bring it back to the top. Really clench those bum cheeks on the way up Then circle those arms about a little bit wider than shoulder width through the fingers and then pull the thumbs backwards as you breathe out. Feel the whole front line opening up. Uh, let's do that again. Soften those knees, lift your tail, lean forward, inhale deeply. Exhale to bring it back to the top again, making sure that we find the bum cheeks engaging, bring the arms up, and then lean back to breathe out. One more time, please. In through the nose, out through pursed lips. Down we go, nice and deep. Allow the neck to relax, inhale at the bottom, take it back up. Bring those arms up. And lean back. Perfect. Pulling the arms sideways, we're now going to go into rotation. Look over your shoulder and just a gentle back warm up here. You know the drill. They always look the same, these movements at the beginning. And look over the shoulder, making sure we turn the face, we turn the head. Try to keep the hips as still as you can, so you're finding a pure rotation through that vertebra. The more you lead through the hips, the more you... Loose that movement through the spine. Now breathe out. Back to the centre, breathe in. A couple more times. Last one, please. Back to the centre, bring the arms to your side. Good, making sure that we're standing nice and tall, we're going to go into a side extension. Finding the stretch just above the hip bone on the side that you're leaning away from. And then add the arm, but the arm reaches up to the ceiling. So don't reach over and across, reach the arm up to the ceiling. Make sure you breathe out. Now pay attention to where your arm sits. So the arm should be sitting right next to your ear rather than in front of you. So see if you can pull that arm a little bit further back. So when you look straight ahead, you should not be able to see any part of your arm, not even a shadow of that arm. So really pull that back as far as you can. And breathe out. Keep your arms long, even in the movement. One more on each side. Last one on the other side. Beautiful, and bring it back to the center. Nice, we're now gonna lift one arm up and we're gonna lift the opposite leg up. Pull the tummy in when you do this, good, and then swap over. Just a march, pull the knee up. I'd like the knee to travel past your hip. So pull the knee up really quite high. So past the hip bone, if I show you from the side, rather than just marching here up to the hip, I'd like you to pull that knee much further up. Good, keep holding on to that balance. Good, if you can, you can speed it up a little bit, but keep it controlled. Everything is done with a lot of control. Good, you've got eight, keep going. Seven, six, five, Four, three, two, and a one. Perfect. Bring your feet down. Now widen them gently and turn your feet down ever so lightly. Then we're going to come into a squat. Take it down and back up again. Clench your bum cheeks as you bring this up. Take it down. Feel free to do a lot bigger there through the squat. My squats are still fairly small due to my, due to my knee injury. So bring it down nice and low. Breathe, please. Try to find the same amount of depth and the same amount of engagement through both of your thighs. 
So make sure you're not leaning into one leg more than the other. Same amount of weight on the, each of your heels. Good, see if you can pull the arms further up without bringing the chin forward. You've got four more. Come on, lift those arms up a little bit higher. Three, lift the breastbone up. Two, the arms should sit right next to your ears. You've got one more, take it down and bring it up. Well done. Next up is balance and hip control. So you're gonna use your block. You can use any sort of thing. You could even use your water bottle. So if you've got a water bottle somewhere and not a good block, then just use that. I'm gonna have the chair next to me just in case I need to hold on. I'm gonna place my feet parallel and I'm gonna place my block right next to my foot. I'm trying not to hold on. So your aim is to do this balanced without holding on. So I'm gonna open up my arms. I'm gonna pull the tummy in. I'm gonna lift my pelvic floor. I'm gonna shift onto the leg that's furthest away from the block. And then I'm gonna take my leg and I'm just going to circle once around, bring your feet parallel without standing down and then bring it around the other way. Good, don't stand down. Round you come, hold it in balance. Round you go, hold it in balance. Keep breathing, round and hold. Round and hold, good, you've got four more. Round and hold, round and hold. Make sure you're breathing. You've got one more now, so bring it around one more time. Good, and then lift that leg above the block and just hold it there and give me little pulses right there. Make sure you don't knock your block over. You've got 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then lift the leg and place your leg down. Perfect. Right, we're gonna do something else in between to give those legs a rest. You're gonna take the back of your chair you're going to lean backwards. So pull your tail back, arms are perfectly lengthened, and then you're gonna sink down. Sink down and really feel that, that armpit stretch, the shoulder stretch that you're creating here. Making sure the head doesn't drop down, so lift the back of your head up. Pull the tummy in and bend your knees a little bit more. So the knees are slightly bent. Breathe deeply into this. And with each breath, see if you can sink your breastbone a touch further down. So keep sinking downwards through that breastbone, making sure that we're pulling the tummy in for this stretch. Feet are nice and safe and wide. Knees are gently bending. Make sure it doesn't take your breath away. And with each breath, we're sinking a little bit further down. You've got two more breaths right here. <clears throat> And then on the third one, you'll pull yourself back up, walk forward, grab your chair, place it over to the other side. Grab your block, place it next to your foot. Obviously, we're on the other side now. The chair is there if you need it. Bring the arms out, lift your breastbone up, and start your circular movement around the block. We're not standing down, if at all possible, in between those circles. So try to keep that balance going all the way to the end. Four more. And three. And two. You got one more. Good, you're now gonna bring that leg up and over again, right over the top of the block, and you start your pulses, making sure we don't knock the block down. Keep breathing, and again, we're lifting that breastbone up nice and high. Look at the horizon. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift the leg over and bring the arms down. Good job. All right, we're ready for the floor. Lose your chest. I'm going to pull you forward a little bit. Come down onto the mat, onto all fours, and start, as always, with your cat-cows. On all fours, your cat-cows.
nice and round. And lengthen forward and down. But the first few might be really tight. So just start working into the length of that spine. You don't want to force, you don't want to push. Do as much as you can. Just always feel how you're gently pulling the shoulders down your back. How you're lengthening. How that tummy pulls in. And feel the hip movements. Feel the centre of your spine move. And also make sure that the head is moving up and down. Basically the head and the hips are doing the same thing. The mid spine is doing the opposite of what the head and the hips are doing. Keep breathing. Couple more. And then come into neutral. Good. We're going to grab the block. We're going to place the block underneath our hand and we're going to allow the fingers to just drop over the side of the block. So the fingers are not on the block, the palm of the hand is. Good. And now just appreciate for a moment that your hips are square, your shoulders aren't square because one hand is on the floor. So the shoulder are, the shoulder are at an angle. So what you're going to do, you're going to draw the belly button and tuck the tail and pull both shoulders down. And on the exhale, you're going to pull the shoulder up. The hand is now hovering. Inhale, bring the hand back down. Exhale, lift the hand away from the shoulder. Make sure the shoulders are now nice and horizontal. And keep going. Breathe out, pull the hand up and bring it down. So we're working on shoulder stability. Lift it up and take it down. So what you'll feel, you'll feel the shoulder blade pulling away from the floor. Pull the shoulder blade away from the floor. You've only got two more on this side. Pull it up. Sink down again. You've got one more. Pull it up. Hold. Make a fist. And I'll just lift the arm out to the side without moving the spine. Breathe out to lift. Breathe in to bring it down. Two more where you just lift. Bring it out. Bring it down. Last one. Good. Now you're going to do exactly the same, but you're going to take your upper body with you. So you're opening up. Breathe out as you do this. Bring it in. Make sure the fist is hovering. And breathe out. Lift it up. And breathe in. Lovely rotation here. Two more. Make sure it doesn't take your breath away. Last one. Breathe out. And breathe in. Gorgeous. Good. Take the block. Bring it further forward and sit back into a child's pose. As far back as you can come. And just lengthen away from your fingertips. Of course, if child's pose aren't suitable for you, you can roll onto your back and pull your knees to your chest. Good, so I currently have the, um, the block underneath my right hand. I'm now taking my towel and I'm placing the towel onto the block. I'm then finding my right knee and I'm going to place the block with the towel underneath my right knee. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did with my shoulders, but this time I'm doing it with my hips. So, hands are underneath my shoulders. Both knees are underneath my hips. Just appreciate that the shoulders are now square to the floor, the hips are not, because one knee is higher up than the other one. Good, now you need to pull the tummy in a little bit more, take a deep breath in, and on the exhale, you're going to lift the hip bone up together with your foot and bring it back down. So you're pulling the hip up, so the hips are now vertically, sorry, horizontally to the floor, so square to the floor. Breathe out to lift, breathe in to take it down. A little bit harder than lifting the hand or the shoulder up. Breathe out, breathe in. Good, now you're gonna do two more of these. Breathe out, breathe in, last one. Lift the kneecap away and hold. So now we're gonna do exactly the same thing. You're gonna bring the knee out and bring it back down again like we did with the arm. And breathe out, bring it out. Keep the hips square to the floor. Breathe out, it's almost like you're peeing against the a lamppost. Good. The knee's always hovering at the same height as the other knee that's on the block. Good. You're now going to start rotating. So the whole of your hip together with your head is rotating. So lift a little bit higher up. Lift the hip up. Look out to the side. Breathe out as you do that. Breathe out. 
Breathe in. You've got one more. And breathe out. Lift it up as high as you can. Breathe in and sink onto the floor. Perfect. Okay. Change the block over without the towel to the other side. And just leave it there for now. And then give me big shoulder rolls. Big, big shoulder rolls. If you can't do this kneeling, stand. Tuck your tail between your legs. Draw the belly button in. Feel how the glutes are supporting. Good. Hands are diagonally forward. Take a deep breath in. On the exhale, pull your shoulders together. On the inhale, bring it forward. So what I want you to do, I want you to activate the shoulders in, the, the muscles in between your shoulder blades. Like upper back. Breathe out as you pull back. And make sure you feel those muscles, not just the bottom, but the top of your shoulders activating as well. Pull the tummy in, please. Breathe out as you pull back. Breathe out. Breathe in. Make sure there's no pain in the lower back. So really tuck the tail between your legs. Pull your tummy in. Glutes are alive and well, clenching. Good. Pull it back, hold, and give me little pulses. Breathe into that upper back. Those are your postural muscles. Breathe, breathe. They might be a little bit lazy, those muscles, because we're leaning forward too much. Breathe and push. You've got four, three, two, and one. And relax. Well done. So kneel forward again. The block is now underneath your other hand. In my case, it's the left hand. Appreciate that the hips are square, the shoulders are not. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Draw the deep breath in, pull the shoulders back and down. Lift the hand off the floor until the shoulders are square. Breathe out as you lift. Breathe in to bring it down. So it's called a retraction of the shoulder. Breathe out as you do this. Again, really important for good posture that our bodies are able to retract the shoulders as we're doing right now. We're gonna do one more. Good, then hover the hands parallel, a fist, and then bring the arm out. Breathe out as you do this. Your whole upper body is now square to the floor. Make sure you keep pulling the tummy in. Are you ready for the rotation? Lift up, breathe out, rotate from the hips into the crown of the hip. Breathe out, bring the hand back in line with the other. And again, breathe out. Okay, you got two more. Breathe out, find the rotation. Keep pulling the shoulders down. Last one, breathe out and bring it down. Perfect, move the block forward a little bit. Come back into your child's pose. Good, and all we need to do now is copy this onto our hips. So take the towel again to place your knee on top. Good, making sure that our knees are parallel. Just check for me, please. Your hands are parallel as well. They're right underneath your shoulders. Pull the tummy in, pull the shoulders back and down. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, you pull the knee away from the floor. You're not really landing the knee anymore. You're just hovering the knee over the top of your mat before you breathe out and pull it back up again. Make sure that you're not dropping the chin forward. Lift the back of your head up. Breathe out. Breathe in, get two more. Lift the hip up, bring it down, last one. Lift the hip up and hold. Now both knees are at the same height. Lift the knee out to the side so you're peeing against the lamppost. And breathe out, hips are square to the floor. And breathe out, good. One more like this, breathe out. And now we're gonna start rotating to so lift a little bit higher up. Breathe out, look over and away and down again. So your whole upper body is rotating. Keep the arms long. Two more. Breathe out. Breathe in, you've got one more. Breathe out. Breathe in and come off the block. Nice and gently. Good, back up onto your knees. Shake out your wrists. It's a lot of weight bearing onto those wrists. We're kind of got, look, can't speak. We're gonna go all the way down onto the floor. And start with our back extension. So arms are in surrender position. So the forearms are parallel to the mat on the floor next to it. Turn the heels inwards. Clench the bum cheeks. Draw the belly away from the floor. Pull the shoulders down. Lengthen your spine. Take a deep breath in. 
And on the exhale, you're going to lift the back of your head up. And with length, lengthen yourself away from the floor. Good. And then back down again. So for the first few, think about length. So as you come up, think about lengthening and growing from the hips into the crown of the head. So think about gaps in between your vertebras as you come up. So a lengthening sensation. I'm not pushing the height at the moment. I'm not pushing the curvature of my spine either. So it's just that length. Trying to lift the spine away, binding length. Good, once we've got that length and you're pain free, you now can work on the curvature of your spine. So what you wanna do, you wanna lend forward through the breastbone more, pull the shoulders down more, lift the back of the head a little bit more and look straight at the horizon and then bring it back down again. So think about the curvature of your spine, making it a little bit rounder. If that's too much, come back and just do that lengthening exercise rather than the curvature. You've got three more. Keep the shoulders down, be engaged. Make sure the glutes are helping with the movement. That belly button is pulling away from the floor. You've got one more, please. And bring it back down. Good, you're now gonna hover the nose over the floor, pull the chin into your neck and start with your leg extension. So extend one leg away from the floor with each breath. Think about length, like we did in the first exercise, not height. So try not to lift your hip bone away from the floor. What you wanna to try to do is lengthen the leg out of your hip joint rather than finding height. You wanna find length. So as long as your big toe and the kneecaps are lifted, I'm happy. Once you've got that length, once you can feel the length, once you can feel how you're connecting to the belly button pelvic floor with the breath, then you can give it a little bit more height. So that's your level two, just extending a little bit higher, but really listening to your lower back. No increased pressure into that lower back. Pull the shoulders down your back. Level three, what you can do is you can do both ends. So lengthen through both ends, Bring it back down again. Only bring this as high up as you can without playing up that lower back. So I don't have a huge range of movement. Your back might be happier to bend a little bit deeper, but only if it's pain-free. My elbows don't want to lift, but if your elbows want to lift, then go for it. I know if I lift my elbows up, my back is not going to be happy. Length, length, length. Give me one more, please. Breathe out. And breathe in. And relax. Give your bum cheeks a wiggle. And then turn over. Turn over, please. I've got my band handy. Good. I'm going into pelvic tilts. It's a nice, lovely tilt through the pelvis. I'm not lifting my bum cheeks off because that's called a bridge, not the tilt. I'm feeling how my hip bones are tilting towards me. I feel how my tummy wall hardens, how I'm lifting my genitals and my back passage up and towards me. What I don't feel is any pressure downwards into the mat. So yes, the mat and the lower back touch, but there is no pressure there. You keep that energy that you're creating with the tilt within your torso, please. Couple more. Did you wanna do one more? And for this one, you're gonna go all the way to the top. So find each and every vertebra, say hello, shake hands with every vertebra here. Just check that everything is as it should be. Pull the chin forward. Really feel your glutes engage as you lift up. Inhale, exhale, bring it back down again. So make sure that you try your hardest to engage both sides of your bum cheeks with exactly the same strength. So you're coming up as even as possible. So again, that precision bridge, that warm up bridge, all the way to the top, chin forward. 
and back down again. Good, this is your level one. Really happy for you to just carry on with this. But if you want more, we are going to go more. Hold it at the top. So what you can do for a level two, you can just hold it here and leave it be. But if you can, lift one leg up. Hold it in a nice bent knee. Then you drop your hips down and lift it back up. Keep your spine neutral as you do this. We're going to do six on each side. That's number two. Breathe out the way up. Three. And four. Tuck your tail in. Five. And six. Hold it at the top, please. Hold it, hold it. Gently bring that leg down on the exhale. Good. Get those feet to go parallel again, hip width apart. Make sure they're not too close. Lift the other leg up, hold. Let's go on this side. Inhale to drop. Exhale to lift. Keep tucking the tail in. Inhale to drop. Exhale to lift. Inhale, drop. Exhale, lift. Keep going. You've got three more. Two. Last one. Hold it at the top, place the foot down. Make sure your feet are hip width apart. Take a deep breath in and roll it down. Beautiful. Nice. Okay. Give me a pelvic tilt and then hold in the imprint. So once the lower back sits flat on the floor, stop. So you wanna feel that contact between lower back and floor. Your tummy pulls in, your pelvic floor lifts. Pull one knee as close to your chest as you can. Pull the other knee as close to your chest as you can. Good. From this position, we're going to bring one foot forward. We're going to tap the floor and then we swap. And breathe out as you do this. Keep pulling the knee towards you. Tap forward. Keep the lower back on the floor. Keep your shoulders engaged. Lovely. Don't hold on to your legs. Arms are by your side. This is your level one, suitable for osteoporosis, neck issues, spinal issues. Good, keep going level ones. Level twos, pull both of your legs towards you. Come up into an abdominal flexion. Drop one leg, hold on to the other one. Toe taps, level two. So single leg stretch with bent knees for a level two. Outside arm is long, inside arm is short. For a level three, you lengthen the leg forward, lengthen as close to the floor as you can. Keep breathing. I'd like eight more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pull both knees towards you, head goes back on the floor and relax. Turn your head one way and then turn the head the other way. Good, we're now gonna go into a double leg stretch. We're gonna build it up. Place your feet on the floor. Again, imprint that lower back. Arms are now hovering alongside your body. A bit like the 100 position, perfect. But we are going to lift our arms to our ears straight up. Yep, and then a semicircle along the floor, back to our hips. Let's do that again. Lift the arms in a straight line up to your ears. Keep the lower back imprinted and engaged. Semicircle back down, so a little bit faster. Arms to ears and around. Good, listen. Level one, osteoporosis. Keep the head on the floor, stay in this level. Don't push anything. Everybody else, lift the head up, lift the shoulders up. Same thing, bring the arms to the ears, semicircle down, level two. Arms to the ears, semicircle down. Make sure there's a good breathing pattern going on. Level three for the adventurous ones. Bring both knees towards you, make sure you're nicely engaged. Both at the same time, open up, bring it around, good. You try to breathe out in the full lengthening and pulling back. Inhale as you come to the center. Breathe out, 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 in. Breathe out, 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 in. Good, let's do three more. Breathe out and in. Two more. Breathe out and in. Last one. Breathe out and in. 
hand behind the head this time. Bring the head onto the floor. Bring your feet onto the floor, arms to your side, super glue your knees together, start your twist stretch. Get the further you bring the arms up to the ears, the deeper the chest stretch. You wanna feel something in your lower back as a stretch sensation, not an increased pain. Keep your legs together, keep your feet together, super glue them together, please, those feet and legs. Good, make sure your feet are on the floor, they're not hovering. So your big toes are always on the mat. Big toes are always on the mat and keep moving, keep moving. That's it. And what you should be feeling is an increased ability to move. So the more you do these, the deeper the movement becomes, hopefully. Feet on the floor, please. Some of you are still lifting the feet away from the floor. They stay on the mat. Look away from your knees. You've got a couple more. Don't forget to breathe. And last one, please. And back to the center. Perfect. So you put a band somewhere next to you. Let's do some hamstring stretches. You're going to take one leg and you're going to thread your foot into the band. And you're going to hold the band fairly loosely. So you don't want to hold the band close to your foot. You want to hold the band right at the end. The band is not really here to um, give you a huge amount of support. The band is here. So it's just a little bit easier to find that stretch. So first of all, pull the big toe towards you and allow the length of the back of your leg to develop, particularly through the calf. Shoulders are pulling into the mat. You should be able to hold your band with two fingers, just pinched between your fingers. So what I don't want you to do, I don't want you to hold it really tight and pull that leg into your hip joint. I want you to be able to lengthen the leg up to the ceiling instead. So that the, the band is just a little bit of a help. It's not really a crutch. So you don't want to lean on it. It's just there for, for support. And if the elbows are on the floor, you can really work on your shoulder strength as well. Good. We're now going to gently start pulling the leg a little bit closer to us. So make sure, unless you have been diagnosed with hypermobility, that you try to unlock your knees so completely Sorry, lock your knee. So completely lengthen that knee, even into hyperextension. Okay, so there is no knee bend there at all. You might find that it's really quite tight behind that thigh. Of course, if you've got a knee injury and the doctor told you not to block out, lock out your knee, then you don't do it. But if there is no underlying issue, then go for it. Good, and you should feel after a few seconds that you can lift that leg even closer to you. That's it, make sure it doesn't take your breath away. Okay, we're now gonna take our whole leg from the hip all the way into our heel, and we're gonna rotate from the right to the left. So we're not circling the leg, we are rotating the thigh bone in the hip joint. Don't move the leg from side to side. Don't circle the leg. You're rotating your thigh bone in your hip joint. So the toes go from right to left, the heel stays put. And what you should feel is that stretch changing from one position to another. So for me, turning my foot outwards is much tighter than turning my foot inwards. I'm gonna do it one more time. Then we're gonna bring the leg back to the center. We're gonna let go of our arms. We're going to bend our knee, pull our knee towards us, pull the tummy in, and then change over to the other side. Then we're going to lengthen the arms again. We're going to pull the elbows into the floor, and again, we're holding it very, very lightly. Oh, this leg is much tighter in my body, so lift the heel up. And I'm pretty sure that we're all tighter on one side than the other. So just take that on board and make a mental note. 
pull the big toe down. So I'm not particularly pulling my leg towards me at the moment. I'm flexing my foot and I'm lengthening the heel up to the ceiling. I'm trying to get that knee to completely straighten out. So again, unless there is no underlying issue there, lock out the knee. Good, and then we're gonna gently pull the leg towards us. Just gently pull it inwards. Hold it there. Make sure that you're engaging the core, so you're pulling in through the belly button. And then you're gonna move again. Toe outwards, heel inwards, and then over to the other side. So we are rotating our thigh bone in our hip joint. We're not circling anything. We're not dropping from side to side or forwards or backwards. We're just rotating like a screw from side to side. Good. Funny enough, on this side, I'm tied to turning my leg inwards. Four, three, two, last one, one. Back to the center, lengthen your arms. Bend your knee and come out of your band. Place the band next to you. Find your block and line your side. Start off by facing the screw, it's always easier. <clears throat> line your side. Line up your heels, your bum, your shoulders, the back of your head. If you're struggling with that, just line everything up against the back edge of the mat. Pull the bottom arm under so the shoulder is underneath the other shoulder. So you're not, you're not reaching forward through the hand. Lift up. And that will also give you the gap underneath the ribcage. Hand onto your hip, please. Perfect. So we're going to lift the whole leg up. Whole thing comes up and then bring it down. Good. And then just the knee. Keep your feet together. Go again. Whole leg comes up. And then just the knee. Keep your feet together. So one full leg lift. One plan. Okay, we're not going to double this up. So we're going to do a little pulse. One, two. Take the leg down. Plan. One, two. Good. Three times. Keep tucking your tail between your legs. One, two. Three pulses, take it down. Three pulses, one, two, three. Make sure there's no hip rocking going on. Four, one, two, three, four. Take it down, open up. Four, three, two, one. Five, please. Lift up and five, four, three, two, one. Take it down and open up. Five, four, three. What you should start to feel is that bum cheek engage. And lift up for six, five, four, three, two, one. Take it down, lift the knee. Six, five, four, three. So we're going to go all the way up to eight. So seven is next. One, two, seven, close. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last lot, eight. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Close it and open up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and hold. Good, hold it there. Lift the top leg up, go knee to knee. Lift the top leg up, go toe to toe. And knee to knee. So it's an inward and external rotation through the hip joint. Good. Keep going. Make sure you have a break. If there's anything going on that you're not happy with, have a break. Exaggerate the movement. Make it as big as you can. And knee to knee. Lift that foot up as high as you can. Make sure the hips don't move. You've got four more. You've got three. You've got two. You've got one more. And pull it in. Lift it up. And relax. Good job. But we're going to come up onto our elbows. You're going to imagine that you've got a raw egg underneath the armpit. So make sure you don't squash the egg. So you're just keeping the egg stuck underneath that armpit. Pull the shoulders down. Grab hold of the top leg. Hold on to your foot. Draw the belly button in. Tuck the tail in. Allow this top shoulder here to pull back. Good. 
And now lift the waist away from the floor as you pull the heel nice and gently towards you. Tuck the tail between your legs. Feel the stretch in your quadricep muscle, the muscle here. Also your hip flexors. So it could come all the way up into this area there. Just keep tucking the tail in for me, please. Good. Don't forget, you've got a raw egg stuck underneath the armpit. Don't squash it. We've got four more. Three, two, and let go. Perfect. Push yourself all the way up. Grab your block. Place the block over to the other side. Lie back down. Line yourself back up again. Beautiful alignment from the heels into your bum, into your shoulders, into the back of your head. Use the back ledge of the mat if need be. Hand on the hip. Make sure the waist is lifted. Also, the rib cage is lifted. Lift the top leg up and a clam. That's number one. Good, let's start with the pulses. One, two pulse, take it down. And one, two pulse here. Good, keep going. Lift up for three. Three, two, one, take it down, lift up. Three, two, one. Make sure you pull the tummy in so there's no rocking going on. Four, three, two, one. Take it down, open up. Four, three, two, one. Yeah. Please give me five. And five, four, three. Keep pulling the shoulders back. One, close it. And five, four. Come on, open up a little bit more. Six, please. And six, five, four. Push the bottom leg into the floor. And six, five, four, three, two, one. Again, again, again. Seven, please. Seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Take it down, lift up, and seven, six, five. Keep clenching. Three, two, one. Go again, lift up, and eight, seven, six. Close. And eight, seven, six, five. Keep pulling the tummy in. Here we go. Knee to knee, toe to toe, knee to knee. Toe to toe. Really open up those knees. Work through the pain. If there's some muscle burn going on, just work through it. It will disappear. And knee to knee. And toe to toe. Keep the knees open. Knee to knee. Toe to toe. You've got three more. Knee to knee. Toe to toe. Two to go. Knee to knee. Toe to toe. Last one. Knee to knee. Toe to toe. And rest. Come on up onto the elbows. Place that raw egg back underneath the armpit. Grab your leg, pull it back. Really lengthen through the knee. Tuck your tail in. Good. Pull the shoulders down your back. Lift the breastbone up. The waist is lifting away from the floor as you protect the egg. And tuck your tail in, please. Really clench your bum cheeks. Pull the top shoulder back for me. Just the loudest stretch also to open up through the chest. You've got four more breaths. Three, two, and one, and let go. Come all the way to the top. Good, and let's give yourself a few shoulder rolls here. Maybe a little bit of a freestyle stretch through the neck. Good job, every everyone. That's all done for today. Thank you for joining me and hopefully see you very soon. I'm just going to turn the, the recording off.